I've never played Pal World, but that doesn't mean I can't draw pals that I've never seen. Hello, hello, I'm Patrick. I'm an artist and I love having fun with art. Today we've got some time-lapse drawings of Pal World Pals that I drew on my YouTube live stream recently. I just started streaming on Wednesdays on YouTube. You should consider joining me and offering suggestions. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. I'm also on the march to a thousand subscribers. And your views, your time, your likes, your subs, all of it means the world to me. So thanks. Uh, with that said, let's get to the art. So we started with Beak On. That's right, Beak On. And I had no idea exactly what this pal was, but I had the word beak and I had the word beacon. So I thought maybe it might be a penguin with a light on top of it. So I went about drawing the shapes of a penguin and putting like a warning light on top. I wanted to make sure it had a beak because that's kind of important. And you know, I just went for cute penguin vibes. It's really fun drawing creatures that you've never seen before. If you've never tried it, like do your best to like find a list of things that you've never heard of or seen and give it to try just to see what you get from it. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing this and Beacon is one of my favorites because it's just turned out so, so cute. I'm working on the line art here. It was all about just keeping things fast and loose and just trying to get some of the vibes I wanted from the original idea. Putting it all together here, we're just wrapping up these feet, getting in the style lines, and I think that's probably gonna be our beacon. Let's check out the final reveal. After beacon was T-Fant. Now, the sensible part of me saw Fant and thought elephant, and the other sensible part of me thought, ah, tea Fant, some kind of tea elephant. This was a natural and good instinct. However, I read Teef Ant, and so I decided to make an elephant with absurd teeth. And so we have Teef Ant being drawn here. Uh, I didn't really like this first batch of teeth. It was a little bit too much, so I do work them down a little bit. Um, but yeah, I work on drawing an elephant and having a great time. Have you played much Pal World? I know I've asked this before, a few things where we've had pals in them recently. But uh, yeah, the game looks crazy fun and looks like people are spending hours upon hours in them. I haven't really been able to play a lot of the like first person, third person, building, craft em up worlds games in quite some time because I find myself getting a little bit like motion sickness when playing games uh, like that. Do you ever get motion sick when you're playing a game? Do you have any tips on how to like not get motion sick? Uh, Cause I really like playing games, but a lot of them these days, I just gotta pass up. Uh, I really wanna play Baldur's Gate 3 eventually. That one won't make me feel sick. I just wanted to say how cool I think Baldur's Gate 3 looks. Someday, it's on my wish list. For now, we're just working on some very elephanty shapes for our T-Fan. I want him to be a cute little elephant. So he's got this cute pose where he's sort of bent over his own leg. And uh, yeah, I smudge him a bit with the uh, liquify tool, work in some basic shapes, and it's time to transition over to line art. I definitely wanted this one to be cute, because if you're going to go with a name like Teef, and you say, oh, I've got good Teef, uh, you really, really want to make sure you get the cute factor in there. Otherwise, it's just sort of disturbing to be a Teef ant. And so, yeah, I really wanted to make sure that the cuteness factor went through. I gave a feminine eye here with some real pre-planned uh, sparkle life, as I often call it. What's your favorite animal? Mine's actually a penguin, which I probably should have mentioned when we were drawing the penguin. But here we are at the elephant. Uh, I know lots of people who love elephants. My wife loves giraffes. It's really a matter of personal opinion and taste for sure. But I have a special place in my heart for drawing um, and making like baby animals because they're just so dang cute like this is a little elephant here it just like has captured my heart and i hope it captures yours too as we get through here i'm just sort of refining some of these shapes i like to sketch very loose and then use my line art to get some structure uh, all in all i think this elephant turned out great it's not exactly a teeth ant but you know it's my version of teeth ant i hope you enjoy the final reveal
Up next, we have Felbat. So it's hard to not think about Zubat when you get a prompt like Felbat. So I decided to do some like work in the wording, looked up what Fel meant, and it meant like disguise, tricksy lies. And so I thought, well, of course, a Felbat would be a bat that's a lie. And so I made a happy little dude in a bat costume, not a Batman. I'm no, no copyright infringement here. Just a human in a bat costume, really trying to pretend to be a pal, but definitely not. I mean, he'd be a great pal, right? But not in the pal world sense of pals. Uh, I wanted to really have him just sort of sad in his bat outfit, but like happy. Like it's a bit of a pathetic outfit, but I think it kind of works for them to seem like they are trying. These droops were a lot of fun to draw because it really took what was, you know, very pointy and shaped and made it just a draping blanket on his back. And uh, yeah, the rest is just sort of adding in, you know, clothing and detail, just to get that pose extra fun. I went with like this upper shirt turn here, this little semicircle uh, raising the shirt up. It just makes the shirt look that much more pathetic and it really works for this character. I've talked before about how I'm such a fan of Batman. Um, I really liked the recent Merry Little Batman. I don't know if you saw that around Christmas time. It's on Prime, at least as far as I know. This isn't an ad, I just really like it. Really cool art style by a whole bunch of fantastic artists whose names escape me right now, but go look it up because they're really talented and their work certainly is lingering in my brain. This feels like it has a bit of the energy of that film, but of course it's got my own unique flair and it's not nearly as good as theirs. But yeah, Felbat. He's a human in a bat costume, just trying to make his way in a pal world. Maybe he's just lonely. Either way, this is going to be Felbat. Let's check out the final reveal. All right, next we got Catrice, which I looked at and saw the word mattress and I saw the word cat. And so I just went with a cat shaped like a cushion. It seemed like a very sensible thing at the time. In retrospect, it wouldn't do very much. It's probably more of a comfort Pokemon or a resting Pokemon. It's not a Pokemon at all. It's probably more of a comfort pal. Uh, <laughs> oh, I can't help but say that, I'm sorry. Anyways, uh, <laughs> You know, maybe it provides healing or group support or something. I don't know. So yeah, I decided to go with this cushion shape rather than go with a full mattress because I thought that would just sort of lose some of the cat elements of it. But in this sort of shaping, I felt like I really had something to work from and I uh, really enjoyed making this one work. I presume that none of it moves beyond what it already is sitting in and it just sort of rests there permanently, a fixture unto itself. Either way, it's the perfect friend to bring on an adventure, I guess. I don't know. I don't design these things for professional companies. I design them for fools on the internet. Thank you for being one of those fools. Don't forget to subscribe if you uh, want to continue to be one of those fools. I appreciate it. Looks like our Catris is coming together here. Just got to get a few more details in. Uh, this little center section is, was really fun to draw because you got to get those lines in. And there we go. Looks like we got our Catris, and that's going to be that. Let's check out the final reveal. All right, next we got Flack. And let me tell you, when it comes to naming things, Flack is a great name for what I presumed would be a duck. Now, I thought maybe we wanted to make sure that this duck was extra cool. Because you know, this duck flax. He doesn't quack, he flax. And, uh, you know, he's out there living his best life. And so I worked really hard on trying to get a cool duck shape. It's also a little bit sad because he's just sort of, he's got some real Howard the Duck, but like younger vibes. <laughs> and yeah, I gave him a leather jacket and some cigarette because, you know, Apparently that's something I want to draw now. <laughs> Smoking is not cool, but this duck flax.
I did keep the tradition of making sure that he didn't have any pants on because I feel like whenever a duck is wearing clothing, it never wears pants. And so I didn't want to stray too far from tradition in that sense. You got to stay within the, the tropes of the art style you're working in. And when you're in a duck art style, you got to go for no pants. Plus, again, this guy wax. It's good. Oh, my duck friend. He's coming together really nicely. Howard the Duck, I always thought, was a really weird concept. I don't know the full story of Howard the Duck, but I remember the movie in the 80s. I didn't watch it in the 80s, but I saw it eventually. And it is a weird one, right? Anthropomorphic duck. And he definitely probably has relations with uh, Leah Thompson, Marty McFly's mom. It's wild. For now, this duck is coming together, and I think we're just about ready to get to the final reveal. Don't forget, friends. Uh, real friends let friends... Don't let friends whack and drive that doesn't make any sense just ignore that part let's get to the final reveal Jormantide was the next one that I pulled and I was not prepared for Jormantide look I got the word tied so I knew waves were involved but I couldn't figure out what to do with Jorman. Now, the only thing it reminded me was of Skyrim, specifically Jarl Balgroff from Whiterun. So I just went with the sensible choice and made him surfing on a wave as our pal. You know, everyone loves Skyrim, so you can't go wrong with this, right? If you're getting a Jarl out there, everyone's gonna love your game. Skyrim's done well for over 10 years now, so if we get Jarl Balgroff on here, the Jarl of Whiterun, I think that's Balgroff, whatever his name is, um, surfing, everyone will love my version of pals and forget all about what I think is actually a really cool looking pal, which I know now. Uh, but yeah, so I work on getting a Jarl Balgroff head, giving him clothing that matches his typical look, and then, you know, putting him in a surfer pose because Tide, Jormund Tide. Have you played Skyrim? It's a dumb question, because like so many people have played Skyrim. Uh, I played it on November 11th, 2011, the night it came out at midnight. I was sitting there at my home playing it. I remember thinking to myself, this is the most beautiful game I've ever seen. And just walking around, taking screenshots of trees on the path to uh, River Run. Whatever the first village you go to is when you finish the tutorial zone. River Run? Ah, uh, man. It's been too long, Skyrim. But yeah, it's one of my favorites. Actually, the Elder Scrolls series in general always been one of my favorites. I loved Oblivion, the whole thief quest there. Top of the line for me in questing in um, Elder Scrolls games. And yeah, I just fall in love with it every single time. I played the thief line first in Skyrim, not realizing that you had to do thief quests to like improve the guild. So <laughs> I did the whole storyline where it's like, the guild is getting better and better. <laughs> and it wasn't getting any better because I was just doing like the main line story of it. And so, yeah, anyways, this is a long Skyrim talk to talk about Jormantide. He's coming together here. We're gonna finish up this line art and we'll see you at the final reveal. And we discover that it's not Jarl Balgrave. And last but certainly not least today, we have Lunaris. Now, Luna, very clearly a moon thing. Naris, I wasn't sure what to do with. So I started thinking and thinking and I thought, Nar, maybe it's like a narwhal, a lunar narwhal. And so I began shaping out this large whale-like fish thing with a moon at the center of it. And it comes out real cute. I love a cute drawing. You know, I like drawing creepy things sometimes. I like drawing, you know, serious things, but I don't know, something about the cute ones always get me. And so here I am just trying to build in some of the moon craters to make this more moon-like. I really love the way this fish shape turned out. And uh, I was so excited to work on this one. Uh, when I saw the real Lunaris, I was a little disappointed. It's cool, it's like giant, like, 
you know, beautiful creature thing. But I don't know. I kind of like mine better. What do you think? What's your favorite of the pals we drew today? And have I missed any good pals that I should give a try to without seeing them? Because I'm still not playing the game, so I can still try. Tons of them. Uh, let me know if you have any suggestions for them in the future. For now, these are going to be the ones that we did today. I really loved Lunaris here. Just, like, so much joy-filled energy on this one. I also worked on my crater style. You can see me editing them here, where basically if they're on an edge, you don't want to see the full lip. You want to just make it sort of pop out like that. Whereas some of the ones that are fully straight down, you see a little bit more. And we just work on filling in some of these final shapes. <clears throat> and of course, trying to get some little bit more detail in on our craters. And Lunaris is basically there. I love this little whale friend, narwhale friend. I hope you enjoy it too. Let's check out the final reveal. And those are our PAL world PALs that I've never seen before. I had a great time drawing these. I had a lot of fun doing the live stream on Wednesdays where I did this. I'm working on trying to do those every Wednesday for the foreseeable future. So please come and join me. Which of these PALs were your favorite today? Uh, and am I missing any PALs that I really should try to draw before I see them? Please let me know. Of course, I'm on the march to a thousand subscribers and your help goes a long way to getting there. So sharing, liking, commenting, viewing, blah, blah, blah. It's a lot of different things you can do on YouTube, whatever the case may be. <laughs> I'm happy that you just chose to be here today. And yeah, we'll see you on the next one. So till next time, keep being awesome. Bye.